This is such a special four part series. I am making over my childhood home my parents bought 30 years ago. They've been living in England for the last decade and are finally moving back home. So I'm going to surprise them by making this the coziest, most stylish space ever. Oh, what I wish we knew what was coming for us. Graham. Right. Sorry, mom and dad. He's just not the five at all. I'm gonna show you guys the vision. <gasps> Whoa! How cozy does this look, guys? I can't believe how this space looks. Just you wait. And by you, I mean you. Oh my god! <laughs> Let's get started. Welcome to episode three of Making Over My Childhood Home. We are tackling the dining room today. Last week we tackled the living room and now it is time to turn this unused space into a dining room. The thing about this space is that it has always felt so disconnected from the living room. We had that big chest kind of dividing the spaces, but it took up a lot of room. We didn't even have a dining table in this space. It really was just a room that was kind of floating around. No one really knew what was up with it. And again, it always just never felt complete. If you haven't seen the first two episodes, I would highly recommend you go watch them. They'll be linked down below and up here. And make sure you hit that subscribe button because next week I am revealing my parents' new home to them. They're flying here from England. And so you guys get to see their reactions to all the spaces that we end up making over in this home. There was a time when there was a beautiful harvest table up here. I don't even think I have any pictures of it, but trust me when I say we had a beautiful harvest table up here. But again, the space always felt really disjointed from the living room. I think taking that cabinet and putting it into the kitchen has really helped, but I definitely wanna create a space that feels just more intentional. So here is what I'm thinking. So my parents love a combination of Scandi design, boho design, and eclectic design, which really are the styles that I love too. My parents are not afraid of color, but they like pops of color. So I wanna bring back up that beautiful harvest table that my parents purchased many years ago. And I wanna add in some new dining chairs. These ones are from Article, and I love how they're a different tone of wood. To add in that fun pop of color that my parents really love, I wanna get custom seat cushions made for every dining chair Chair, and I want them to be all different colors. So like mustards, blues, greens, pinks. I think they're the perfect way to add in color, which my parents love so much. I'm going to enlist Graham to build a door for this doorway. This opening goes down into the basement and I really think it'll be nice to close it off. I hesitate to call this a barn door, but we are gonna be mounting it on a barn door track because that's really the only option we have to work with. But I'm envisioning a muted pink door, maybe with like some cute scallop trim, a little handle so it can be easily opened and closed. But I think this will be a great way to separate the upstairs from the basement. There's a couple of things I'm gonna have to problem solve actually within this makeover, like in the one day we have to do it. I definitely need something to go on that wall where the cabinet used to be. I'm thinking like maybe a little bar cart or like, I don't know, something functional I haven't planned of anything or purchased anything. I'm kind of gonna be like flying by the seat of my pants. I also really want to grab a statement overhead light and I want to thrift it. I'm still looking, but I'm thinking something like this one. When my dad came to Toronto to do the renos, he pre-installed the barn door track for me. And then I had Jay Davis painting come in to paint the whole house white. I went with Cloud White by Benjamin Moore and Simply White on the trim. And I've said this in every video thus far. It made such a huge difference in this space. And the Jay Davis team was such a delight to work with and they did an incredibly professional job. So if you are looking for painters in Toronto, all their links will be down below. I cannot recommend them and their service enough. Hey guys, uh, another video in this series is happening. We are making over the dining room today. The living room is behind me. It looks so good. So yeah, we're gonna get started in the dining room, starting with a custom barn door situation. Okay, so this, 
goes downstairs, a doorway to the basement basically, but it's never had a door on it just because it's kind of an awkward configuration. So in the most perfect world, we would have done a pocket door here, which is basically a door that slides into the wall, but that wouldn't work because this wall is on a slant. So while my dad was doing renos, he installed this track. I didn't want this to feel like a traditional barn door. I wanted to put my own fun twist on it. I looked at custom ones that are gold, that are more modern, less farmhousey and industrial, but those cost upwards of like $1,000. So this one was really affordable and it matches back to all the other black accents and fixtures I have going in this home already. Graham chose MDF over plywood for this door because there isn't any wood grain. It's super strong. It doesn't split or warp with seasonal changes, which is perfect for this project. You can also shape MDF a lot easier, like cutting it, sanding it, or rounding edges. To round the edges of the door, Graham used a paint can as a guide. He cut out the corners using a jigsaw and shaped them with a belt sander. For the scallop bottom, we went with six scallops. Graham divided 39 inches by six scallops and we got a 6.5 inch diameter for each. Using a tape measure, Graham drew out a grid for the scallops, making vertical lines and horizontal lines from the bottom of the door. Using a zip tie, pencil, and thumbtack, he drew six semicircles. He cut out the scallops using a jigsaw and roughly sanded them to make them smooth. He then used a large router bit and router to round all of the edges on the outward face of the door. He used a rasp to round the edges in the hard to reach areas of the scallops where the router couldn't reach. For the handles, Graham cut out two identical semicircles out of scrap three quarter inch MDF. He rounded the edges using the router and sanded them down until they were smooth. To secure them to the door, he drilled a couple holes and used dowels to hold them in place for durability. He glued them in place with some wood glue and filled in the cracks with wood filler. He then sanded the edges down with 80 to 150 grit sandpaper, primed and painted with three coats of pink ground by Fair Own Ball. This is the door. I need like six of these in my home. Sorry, Graham. You look like you've been through the war the way you're standing. Okay, go I'm, again. I'm just really nervous it's not gonna I made it too long. Okay, this is good. This is dramatic. Um, you might want to fix your shirt. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, mine's on. Okay, um... You somehow went past the track. <laughs> the good news is that it fits. Yes, oh. yes, 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 there. There. Bring it down. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Holy sh**. Whoa. It yeah. wants to roll. Like, a lot. You're just saying it's going to automatically shut? That's pretty slick. No, it's gonna roll the other way. It wants to open. Oh, well, I mean. Wow, it looks incredible, Graham. Well done. It looks really nice. My mom is going to freak out. Like, this door is my mom's dream. How do you feel? I'm proud. Aww. This one turned out really nice. There's not a lot to it. Yeah. But it's got such an impact. How are we gonna keep it closed is the question. So the issue here is that the ceiling is not level and therefore the track isn't level. So what's happening is the door is sliding open because it's tilted down ever so slightly. So we're basically trying to level it. We were thinking of using washers, but Graham is thinking that shims are gonna be better. And our goal is to bring this side of the bracket down. Okay, but this is looking on. pretty promising. Pretty, pretty promising. And I think we could paint them white. Um. No? Okay. <laughs> I was thinking we'd paint them too, no? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, we can put another shim. Bring it in a level. I think we just drop this one down a little bit more. One more shim. Okay, this feels promising. Okay, moment of truth. Nice. Okay, great job everyone. So next we're bringing in the dining table. My parents have had this for so long. I think they thrifted it. It's an original harvest table. I'm not sure why it was moved downstairs, but it was moved downstairs at one point. But this room is definitely meant to be a dining room and it's gonna help the weird non-flow become more flowy. <laughs> I love this table so much. It was always meant to be here, and now this awkward, empty space actually feels like it has a purpose, which we love. Graham is gonna stay behind and do some touch-ups to the barn door, paint it with another coat, and Alana and I are gonna go to HomeSense to find some accessories for the dining room. We've arrived. 
at HomeSense. I have such a long list of things we need to finish off the dining room. Whenever this is the case, we always pop into HomeSense because we know that we will probably find what we're looking for. Okay, how cute are these? I'm gonna get this. We might be able to use it on the dining table. Alana just found these adorable floral coasters we love. This mirror is stunning. I'm like, maybe a cabinet doesn't go beside the dining table. Maybe beside the fiddle leaf, we put a beautiful floor mirror. This is a possibility. I'm gonna see what else they have, but these are stunning. Our cart is full with dining table styling. But now I have to figure out that wall that's between the living room and the dining room. Let's go back to the mirrors and see how tall they are. This one can be really beautiful. I don't know if they're tall enough to fill that whole wall, right? And it's like, yeah. I totally forgot that my parents have this beautiful thrifted dresser upstairs. I thought it'd make a really great place to do like a little, not bar cart, but like place to put extra napkins and placemats. And then we have a cute little lamp we could put on the top, style it all nice. And then above that, I'm thinking of just painting a drop sheet in a paint color we already have. I did something similar in my book and it looked so good. I'm really trying to go budget friendly with this. And I think that this canvas art piece is gonna be really good. <laughs> we got so, much for dining table styling. How cute. This isn't gonna go on the dining table, but I thought it was too good to resist, so we're buying it. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to day two of the dining room. We are starting out with a craft this morning. I am going to do my own art piece for this wall. I actually got this idea from an installation I did in my book, Own Your Space. We're gonna do the same thing for this piece of art. I really wanted something that was dark and grounding, so I'm using the color Salamander. I already have this Ikea frame, so I'm first going to cut some canvas to the size, and then we're gonna get painting. Graham, my assistant. Yeah. It smells like the force of Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's like a mixture of like it's made in Poland. wood glue and wood. <laughs> no, that was so. That I did not like that. Actually, you all knew it was gonna happen. No, I didn't. Grammar thing a bad assistant. So I've cut the canvas. I'm going to take the fabric away, and then Graham is gonna help me tape it to the back. Also, there's a whole peanut gallery watching me do this craft this morning. Alana's here! Yeah! With the basket and the dress? Like, look at this! It's such a mood. This is a mood right here. Now I'm gonna fold the canvas around the backing, and we're gonna use double-sided carpet tape to stick it down. So I'm going to iron this so we got all the creases out. I'm gonna put this outside, I'm gonna let it dry, and then I'm gonna hang some curtains. We're using the same gold curtain rod and clips that we did in the living room. I woke up so excited to put this light up. This was a last minute purchase <laughs> at like 7 p.m. last night. I thrifted this light and it was such a find. This light is made by Luminaire Authentic, which is a Montreal-based lighting company. This retails for upwards of $1,000 and I snagged it for $250. You know those finds on Facebook Marketplace and you're like, yep, that was a good one. This color is also like, so my parents, they love metal lighting like this. It was never in the plan to open up the ceiling, which we would have had to do if we wanted to hardwire this. My parents have tons of pot lights in here that are already a functional light source. I'm putting a little table lamp over here. So instead, for all my renters out there, we are going to just screw this to the ceiling and then we're gonna do our puck light hack. Whoa, <laughs> it looks so good. Like, I'm getting a little misty-eyed. Yeah, this is what I like. We got the crop top frame. 
I can't do anything about it. It is way more popular. Yesterday. It's so you funny. Like solutions. Body suit, <laughs> your Carpet underwear. tape. Today it's a lot. Today it's like. <laughs> today it's like a lot. It is a crop. It's like you got it from Baby Guy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, that looks so good. I was worried that it was gonna look funny with all the pot lights, but it doesn't at all. It kind of just blends in. The decor gods were really, really on my side yesterday and I love it. So you can buy the puck light with a light bulb base as one single product, or like us, sometimes we buy them separately and then just super glue the base to the puck light. You wanna make sure that the puck light opens from the top so you can change the batteries but I'm gonna screw it in. This is so cool, I love it. I'm bringing in the rest of the chairs. I went with these ones from Article. You guys know how much I love Article furniture, but I specifically chose the lighter wood because I really wanted to play with different wood tones, so mixing and matching. In the living room, there's darker wood tones, the table's dark, and I just feel like it creates warmth when you mix and match. That's what we're doing. I'm really, really excited about these chair cushions. These are from an Etsy shop. I'm gonna put the name up on screen and link them down below. The great thing about this store is that they make custom sized cushions to fit any dining chair. So we gave them the exact measurements. They were very thorough about the photos they needed. And I picked all of these different colors. Really playing with color in here, but all the tones work really well together. I'm loving how this table is looking kind of farmhousey, but modern at the same time. And then these cushions are just bringing in this beautiful color. So excited. They also have cute little ties on them. So we're gonna tie little bow ties. Now I'm changing out all the vents. These ones are from Cool Grills. They have replaced every single vent in my parents' home and we are so grateful because they make such a difference in this space. So I am bringing in this dresser. I think it's perfect here because my parents can store place settings like placemats, extra cutlery, and then I'm obviously gonna decorate the top to make it look really beautiful. This is another vintage piece, by the way. My mom is a good thrifter, I have to say. Okay, I'm gonna sign my art piece. It's all dry. This was Graham's idea, by the way. I don't think this is like a masterpiece or anything. I actually did it myself. Yeah. I took out the plexiglass because it was really reflective for our camera, but I actually like it way better. It looks like a textured piece of art, similar to the one we used in Austin's studio. I'm sorry. Sorry, I was... <laughs> <laughs> Similar to the one we used in Austin studio. So just a, just a tip. At first I was like, the lean is definitely the way to go, but I don't know, there's something nice about it just kind of having its place on the wall. It fills more vertical wall space. I am hanging the art print with command strips. Now I am styling the dining table and I wanted to walk you guys through my process because I know styling a dining table can be daunting. So here is what I do time and time again. So I love buying options of things. So two different colors of placemats, different glassware. You can always return what you don't use, but I really love having options. I also love how this allows me to see how all the colors are working together and then I can change things as I go. I try to do this as I shop, but now that I'm in this space, I can see everything more clearly and just in a better light. So right away, I love this brownie kind of caramel color with the purple bowls. Ooh, but this also looks good too. Watch this. Ooh, ooh. Suddenly you have a little cluster of three colors that work together and then I'm just gonna build more. I always love a plate that has some kind of pattern on it or interesting texture. It just makes it look a little bit more elevated, especially if it's in a neutral color. And then paired with these kind of basic bowls. Look at that, so good. We could do just solid napkins, but I'm kind of wanting it to pop a little bit more. Pink is fun. Definitely this for the center. Once I get it all set up, I'm gonna play with vases and see which ones work. But you know what? Let's actually get the placemats down, the plates, the bowls, the cups, and then we'll expand from there. I love that this matches the lights.
So for the center of the table, there's a couple options. You could go with a long tray or one of those long bowls. I want to call them troughs. Like a <laughs> no. Google does say that it is a trough, but it's basically like a long, shallow bowl tray. And you can leave these out at all times. You can put candles on the tray or in the bowl, or you can go simple like I'm doing with just some drapey greens in a vase. You can never go wrong. One thing I like to do to anchor the vase in the center of the table though is put the vase on some sort of tray or trivet. It gives a little more dimension, makes it feel layered and more intentional than just like plopping a vase in the middle. Hot tip here, the greenery that I'm using here is actually filler greenery for bouquets. So it's really inexpensive. I'm weaving in longer branches to make it look a little more interesting and like flowy. I'm also bringing in some candlesticks for a little bit of height. And now it is time for the finishing touches. I'm adding this gingham table lamp to the dresser. Fun fact, I actually brought this home with me from a trip to LA that I went on with Amanda. I brought it in my carry-on. She was like, security's never gonna let you get through with two lamps. Fun fact, they did because it's here. <laughs> Placing a cutting board and layering some of these wavy bowls on top from HomeSense. What a great find. Placing a jug and flower coasters also from HomeSense. And finally, hanging this greeting card I framed as art. I'm hanging it lower so they can see it below the huge pendant light, but it also looks really cool this way. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe that this nothing room has turned into this. I cannot wait to actually sit at this table with my parents and my sister and have dinner. And I love that I was able to reuse a couple pieces that my parents already had. Suddenly this room feels so much more intentional. It flows right into the living room. That fiddle leaf fig really bridges these two spaces and brings them together. The custom art, do we wanna sell these? Do you guys want a custom piece of art from me? Let me know in the comments down below. These seat cushions are so fun. And can we talk about this door? Graham just took like a barn door and made it fun. I love the scallops. I love that it's a different tone of pink. So it's kind of playing off the entryway. You guys know how obsessed I am with the lights that I found for $250. It's incredible. And I just cannot wait to reveal this space to my parents. Next Saturday, we are premiering the last episode of this series. I make over the guest bedroom upstairs and my parents will be here. They are going to see every room we've made over in the whole home. I truly cannot wait and I hope that you will join us. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that last episode. And as always, I'll see you next week. Bye. Wow. Can I throw it at you? Can I try and throw yeah, it? She... Oh. <laughs> once more, once more. You can so do it. Dirty now. Oh. <laughs>